What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 21st of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today. And believe me guys, there were a ton, a ton of stocks and ETFs that did very well today. And we're also going to be talking about what I'm I'm looking to trade here over these next couple of days but before we do get into that for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content here on youtube feel free to go down below and hit that like button guys and i want to challenge you in this video we have not done a challenge in a couple of weeks here can you get this video to 75 likes let's see if we can get 75 likes on this video so go down hit that like button it's greatly greatly appreciated appreciated and if you're new to the channel we have two links down below one being the discord group chat and the other one being the facebook group both of those 100 percent free communities and i guarantee you you'll find a ton of value in there there's a bunch of traders i believe the discord group chat now has about 600 to 700 traders and investors we're chatting all day i'm in there all day we have a bunch of people in there all day so get in there you'll find a ton of value so without further ado let's talk about what ended up happening today and you can see the smile on my face guys it was a crazy day today a lot of my positions did insanely well two of my swing trades they did perfect and the other long-term positions some long-term positions we're going to be talking about in this video did absolutely crazy as well today but before we do get into that let's talk about what ended up happening in the overall markets here starting off with the SPX the S&P 500 so we can see ended up closing Closing off the day today up $30.65 up about 1.1% at the close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 215 points on the day, up about 0.85% at the close. And the NASDAQ Composite guys blew it out of the water today, up 1.5% on the day, up 115 points at the close. So absolutely crazy day today guys in the overall markets and we all know yesterday the Federal Reserve actually came out and said that they're not looking to increase interest rates here in 2019 anymore although the economic growth of the company uh, not the company the country the econ the economy the forecast was dropped a little bit you know the optimism from that rate hike uh, really being halted for the rest of the year from what what Powell said, I think that pumped a lot of optimism into the markets today, thus seeing this huge, huge push, right? So let's just talk about some technicals here very quickly in the overall markets, and then we'll hop into the stocks that I traded and that, and that did very well today. So the SPX, guys, we've been talking about this 2820 level, this old resistance, which is now a new support. We were hovering above this for the past couple of trading days. And if I zoom into the five day, five minute, we can see exactly what I'm seeing here. So on the 15th of March, we broke out of that uh, resistance, making it a new support. And then we've tested that level multiple times, whether it was 2820, 2825, that general area of support was tested on many separate occasions. Once here on the 15th of March, here on the 18th, of March here on the 19th of March yesterday we dipped a little bit below it but ultimately popped back above it once the Fed started at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and today we ended up pulling back down at the market open, we can see we ended up going down to about 28.20, and then we launched off there like a rocket, guys, confirming that fourth or fifth bounce there on the support, and now we're clearly on top of that support, obviously, and we're headed up to the next resistance, which we all know at this point, we've been talking about it, is at about 28.70 here for the S&P 500. So we saw the pullback, guys. That was a little retracement. Honestly, that was a very small retracement. It brought the RSI down a bit, and then we slingshot it up. Now we're looking to test the 28.70 level tomorrow. So for tomorrow, that's exactly what I'm waiting for, guys, right? We can see we bounced on the support. 
support on the 50 SMA like I just showed you guys, the, the support here. And now we're going to be waiting to see, are we going to break out of 2870 to then test the next level, which in this case is going to be at about 2885, 2890, or are we just going to pull back tomorrow, consolidate at this level that we are at right now before possibly testing to break that 2870 level. And let's say we do break that 2870 level. I'm going to be waiting to see if the SPX is going to hold that level as a new support before advancing up to the 2890 level, which is going to be the next resistance. And it's crazy to think here, guys, how close we are now to all-time highs. I remember a bunch of people a couple of months ago saying there's no way the S&P 500 is going to go back to all-time highs. We saw it all over the news. We saw a bunch of people just out there in the community in general saying this. And to be honest, guys, it's looking like we are almost going to be at those all-time highs, proving all of those naysayers wrong. And honestly, I was pretty bearish as well. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, and now, you know, we could potentially hit all time highs. My bearish thesis from a couple of weeks ago has proven to be a little bit wrong, but hey, we could still potentially sell off drastically here in a couple of months. No one knows. But as of right now, based on these technicals, you know, we're testing those all-time highs here very, very soon. We're only 2.5% away in terms of the S&P 500, which is crazy, right? Because back in December, guys, we were down nearly 20, 21% from that peak, which is where we ended up tipping our toes into that bear market that we all know, right? So let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average here. This one ended up doing very well today as well, up 216 points at the close. And it's confirmed now that we broke out of that resistance at about 25,800, where we ended up closing below it yesterday, making it a resistance at yesterday's close. And now that we broke above it, it is safe to say that this is a new support level again, and we're trading in between 25,800 and the 26,200 resistance level here in terms of the Dow Jones. So what am I seeing here on this 20-day, one-hour chart? This little pullback seems to be you know, the retracement that we were waiting for and the fact that we held a higher low from the previous just goes to show now, in my personal opinion, and what I'm seeing here through these technicals, that we're continuing the uptrend and we're looking to test the next high, which is going to be at around $26,100, which is the level that I'm going to be waiting for tomorrow, guys. And if we end up breaking that level, that's going to be the higher high that we want to see on a smaller term basis here in the Dow Jones for it to continue the uptrend trend and of course from that level we're going to be waiting to see if it's going to break this resistance at about $26,200 those are some levels that if we do end up breaking we're going to be end up, uh, you know close to ending up to, uh, testing those all-time highs even in the Dow Jones right so there's two resistances that we need to break here before we can get to that all-time high uh, level here well actually I guess you can say three right we can see one at about 26,400 here and from there we're going to need to test about 26,700 so I guess you can say there's about four more resistances in the Dow before we can end up testing the all-time highs nearly at $27,000 so we have to break this level here we have to break 26,200 26,400 and then 26,800 and in terms of percent we saw the s and is about 2.5 percent off this one's about 3.5 percent off so about one 1% more away from all-time highs than the S&P 500 is. And this is mostly because Boeing stock, we know that Boeing stock took that huge hit, about 10, 15% drop in that stock. And that is a heavy weighted stock in the Dow 30. And that is really holding the Dow down in my personal opinion. Let's say that, um, you know, issue with Boeing never happened. I think the Dow Jones at this point probably would be up here on the $26,400 level. I think it would be up at least two, 300 more points from where, um, you know, it currently is now. If Boeing was still in the $400 to $420 level, who knows, guys? That's just what I personally think here. So the Dow Jones, those are the levels that I'm watching for tomorrow. Just keep an eye. Are we going to break those resistances and continue to 
this upwards swing, this upwards push here. So the NASDAQ today, like I showed you guys, and it's continuing to run here, had the best day out of the three major indices. So we can see we've been breaking out of resistances like crazy lately. We bounced on the support here on the 180 SMA about two weeks ago at this point, and from there, we broke out of the 50 SMA resistance. We broke the $7,100 resistance, the $7,200 resistance. We broke out of the $7,300, $7,500 resistance, and today, we finally broke out of the 70 uh $420 resistance. So remember in yesterday's video, we were trading between the support at around 73.70 and the resistance at about 74.20. We were stuck in those levels for a couple of days here. We can see on the five day, five minute, we were stuck there from about, let's say the 18th, 19th of March up until today when we rocketed out of that 74.20 level breaking that uh, resistance, making it a new support, and getting past the second resistance at about 74.90, which was from a couple of months back, and we can see that here. This was the second level that I was waiting to see a break, and we saw that break today, and this was a support back in September of 2018, guys. So the fact that we're already at levels from back in December in the NASDAQ is absolutely insane to me, guys, right? This has made the craziest comeback, and now we're only about one, let's see, about 2.5% off of all-time highs here in terms of the NASDAQ. So 2.5% away in the NASDAQ, 2.5% away in the S&P, and the Dow was about 3.5% away. So it's safe to say at this point, guys, let's say we have another two, three strong green days over the next, you know, one to two weeks with maybe, you know, a pullback or two in there and we have mostly green, you know, we're going to be at those all-time high levels. We're going to potentially be breaking those all-time high levels, making new all-time highs in the overall stock market, which is absolutely unbelievable, right? This bull run is still 100% intact, guys, and the fact that we've been breaking these resistances back to back to back over the past couple of months, really all of 2019, you know, it's just a crazy thing to see, guys, the power, the power of the stock market. Sure, you know, a lot of people might think this is manipulated. Who knows? It may be manipulated, guys. There's a bunch of theories out there, but that's not the focus of this video. You're free to do your own research and formulate your opinion um, about that. Who knows? It could be manipulated. Maybe it's not manipulated. There's a lot, a lot of theories out there, but we just take it for what it is. The market is almost at all-time highs right now, which is absolutely crazy. So let's get into the two stocks I ended up selling out of today, and those were NVIDIA and ATV, guys. We saw the two swing trades that I took couple of days ago, yesterday for NVIDIA, and I believe two or three days ago for ATV, both of those stocks did absolutely amazing today. And let's just talk about NVIDIA first. NVIDIA is the chip company, and this one literally hit my target, nearly hit my target. I sold a little bit before just to play it safe in the matter of one day. Absolutely crazy. So for those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, I actually got into NVIDIA at about 173 four-ish dollars on the pullback that we saw leading up to the Fed meeting. And if we can see here on the five-day, five-minute, we can see what I'm talking about. So we opened up yesterday at about 175, or rather we popped up or to 179, rather, and then we pulled down all the way to 172.88 right before the Fed meeting. And I ended up taking a position right around here at about $174. And I told you guys, you know, over the past couple of videos that I was planning on getting to NVIDIA with the goal to sell at the next resistance, which was roughly at about $185, which would offer from this point where I got in upwards of 7% profit. And guys, we saw it ran all the way to my target in one day. And I actually ended up getting out roughly at about $183-ish today. It was roughly at about, I think it was like 2.50 p.m. Eastern Standard is when I ended up getting out. Roughly around here, I think it was 2.50. So I ended up getting out, I believe, at about like $183. And we can see 
from 174-ish, where I ended up getting in, up to 183, roughly 183.70, was about a 5.3% move, nearly a 6% move in the matter of a day. So why did I end up selling here? Why did I not hold this overnight? Well, I just wanted to lock in my profits, guys, to be completely honest with you guys, and look for a potential re-entry. At this point, I'm already up 6% nearly overnight in this overnight swing trade. The stock market in general shot up like crazy, especially NVIDIA. So I figured it's safe here to lock in those profits, not be too greedy, not hope that it's going to run up more, break the resistance tomorrow and the next day, continue to run up. But just to play it safe, right? I just wanted to lock it in. You know, I'm more of a conservative trader on my day trades. I'm taking 1% to 2%. So 6% overnight, whew, I am ecstatic with that. And now I'm just looking for a re-entry here in terms of NVIDIA. So we see it's overbought. You know, that's probably one of the main, or it is rather the main reason, one of the main reasons why I ended up selling along with it reaching the resistance. So now tomorrow, I want to see... Are we going to end up pulling back a bit to maintain the level at about 182, maybe 180 flat? That would be an ideal point for re-entry. And let me show you guys here. So the resistance, previous resistance was at about 178, 179. So honestly, that would be the best spot for me to re-enter, roughly 178, 179. But that is asking a bit of a pullback there to get the re-entry. Sure, we might not get that, but if we get to 181, 180, depending on what the technicals are looking like, I might end up building another position there. And let's say tomorrow we burst through this resistance, we end up getting up into the 186s, at 185s, 187-ish levels, you know, and we end up holding this level as a new support maybe for a day or two, that could be a potential re-entry there up to the next resistance which in this case, I'm looking to see, um, I guess you can say it's roughly at about $200 to $205. So let's say we pump up here tomorrow, hold this level. The next uh, you know, gap I'm looking to fill would be up to about $200 to $205 from there, which is about you know, about a 7 to 8% move in NVIDIA. But for now, I'm just super ecstatic with that overnight swing trade in NVIDIA. And the second one that I was uh, ended up taking my profits on literally... 20, 30 minutes ago, right towards the end of the market at about $48.80 was at the Activision Blizzard. And this one ran up like crazy. Another one that I was expecting to hold for a couple of weeks here, but I just wanted to lock in the profits that I did have. So sometimes, you know, I deviate away from my plan if the stock does shoot up like crazy in the short term, just to lock in those profits and look for a re-entering, uh, like a re-entry, right? I think it's very wise to do that sometimes, especially for someone like me, who's a bit more conservative. Sure, if you you're uh, you know, very, very risk adverse. You can hold here and hope to run up to the next resistance. You know, that could be something you can do. But for me, again, I locked in the profits. Let me show you guys exactly where I ended up doing that today. So we got in, I believe, was it the uh, 18th? No, it was not the 18th. It was on this day, I believe, I got in very close to the morning at about $45.66. That was the position I ended up taking. And we saw a nice little pump up that day. I was up quite a bit that day. We ended up consolidating for the next day, which was very nice. We pulled back, held that new support at about 4580-ish here. We ended up popping all the way up today to $48.83. And let me show you guys that move. Literally near near a 6% move in the matter of a day. And my initial goal here with AtV was to get in on the break above this resistance as a new support, which I kind of jumped the gun a bit because we didn't really confirm it as a new support when I did end up getting in, but that's okay. Sometimes I do do that, which is why I scale into my positions. And the goal was to ride it up to the first target, which was at this resistance, right? About 48 to $49. And we can see, we clearly ended up doing that here today. And we can see you know, I ended up taking my profits here at about $48.80, right at the top here. I held it throughout the entire day due to it showing really no signs of a big pullback. Sometimes when a stock runs the entire day, or rather 
It's looking like it's going to run for the entire day, midday. You sometimes see something like this, right, when people start to sell off. But the fact that we bounced here, formed this cup pattern, and ended up breaking out of this resistance at about 48.30 from a couple of hours ago, that gave me the go-to to continue to hold this. And honestly, I had a trailing stop on it, but I just wanted to lock in the profits right around here. So now what I'm looking to do, very similar to NVIDIA, guys, I want to get in on a re-entry if we hold this $48 level as a new support, which I think is very possible. And from there, I would love to re-enter and ride it back up to $51, $51.50, which is the next resistance, offering about a 7% margin of profit. So that is what I did today in terms of at V and NVIDIA. This was probably one of my best days, excuse me, here over the past couple of weeks. Simply trading, I made 6% on two different positions here, which was absolutely crazy. And now let's just talk about some other stocks that did very well today that I also happen to own. Let's start off here with Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. This one went off the wire today, guys. It went absolutely bananas. It went up $7. At one point, I believe it was up $8, $9 per share today. Crazy. It was up like 4 or 5% at its highest. And we filled up from the resistance, or rather the support at 185 We filled the gap all the way to 195 now. So we're going to draw out a new resistance here, which is going to be at about $200. If we successfully hold this res us new support here at 195 and we fill to $200, that's going to be another 2-3% move in terms of Apple stock. And I told the group today, and a lot of the group already know uh, knew this, that I was buying Apple all throughout this dip. I believe the lowest price point where I bought Apple was at about $144. And those shares, guys, they're up over 20% right now, which goes to show, you know, the, the power of cost averaging, right? My average price was brought down in terms of Apple. I bought more Apple bringing my cost average down in hopes of the stock going up, appreciating so I can make more on those shares that I bought at a lower price. And that's exactly what ended up happening here, guys, right? We ended up getting in all the way down to 144, and now the shares that I bought down here, they've appreciated more than 20%, which is really awesome, guys. Really, really awesome. So Apple, that's one that did very well today, but the one that I'm even more happy about, which is my MU position. MU is one of my longer-term positions here, and MU, you guys that have been following the channel for a while now, you know that I've been battered down on MU stock. I got in back all the way back a couple of months ago at about $58. I believe my average cost right now is like $55 or something like that. The stock has been getting pummeled. This was one of my bigger red positions out there. And the fact that we pushed up 10% today up into the $44, the mid $40 range has been awesome for MU guys. I'm really, really happy about this. And they actually beat on earnings per share and revenue, but their guidance is a bit lower but this is not an MU video. We're not going to go too deep into their earnings report. But if you guys want to take a look at that, go do your research on that, if, especially if you're an MU shareholder. And another interesting thing about MU here is we called it out this morning. We talked about how this one could be a potential runner. I talked about it in my morning video because we saw, A, you know, the earnings report beats, the EPS and the revenue beats, and we saw a couple of uh, analysts here upgrade the price on the stock. Let's see if we can see it. Uh, here we go. Price target raised to $64 per share from $55 per share at JP Morgan, which is really, really big. This one was raised to $49 per share from $45 from key, uh, key bank capital. And typically, guys, you know, when investors see, traders see news like this, this could be a catalyst in a stock doing very well. And the other catalyst, which we talked about, the EPS and revenue being a beat, you know, those two catalysts combined, that could end up running up a stock's price. And we saw that today with MU up 10% at the close. Absolutely crazy. So another stock that did very well today, guys, is Microsoft. Microsoft ended up hitting all-time highs again today. 
up to $120 per share, $120.82 to be exact, up 2.3%. Uh, you know, on the day here, absolutely crazy. We saw uh, Facebook actually, they ended up doing very well today as well. We saw the dip. I actually didn't end up buying into the dip like I did talk about earlier on in this video. We kind of did predict it perfectly, uh, you know, in the morning video today. I was talking about how I wanted to see a little pullback to the 163 level for Facebook before it's continuing to push up. We ended up getting exactly that, but I just did not enter into the position because I was focused on NVIDIA at V. I was already doing very well on those and I didn't want to force anything but you know it's pretty cool seeing that Facebook now you know after that bad news it's looking like it is filling the gap back up slowly but surely to $170 and this is definitely one that I'm watching for tomorrow ticker symbol FB so Facebook you know Facebook at V and NVIDIA are three that I'm watching for tomorrow. I'm looking for a re-entry into at V, looking for a re-entry into NVIDIA. So let's see a couple of more here. I had some on the top of my head, but I'm forgetting right now. Um, let's see. Um, at V, we talked about at V. CGC, let's see how uh, ACB did today, because ACB was one and we did get more of that pullback that I was talking about earlier on today and yesterday. So this is one that I'm still actively watching heavily for a pullback down to about 920, 930. I think that would be a very, very solid entry point in terms of ACB. So I'm watching that one very closely here today and uh, heading into tomorrow. Let's see how UWT and crude oil ended up doing. This is, this is a uh, the um, you know inverse ETF combo that I trade all the time here on the channel. It's crude oil, which has two leveraged ETFs, UWT and DWT. And we uh, briefly saw a pullback this morning on crude oil, followed by a nice spike. And now we're pulling back again, holding roughly that support from this morning at around 59.80 to 59.90. So crude oil, I think right now, could open up uh, you know, an interesting play for tomorrow, but we are near that resistance, which leads me, uh, it kind of gives me a little bit of a concern here. Are we going to end up, you know, pulling back a bit more here to test the 50 SMA support again? Are we going to run up to $61 tomorrow before we do see the pullback? These are a couple of things that I am watching in terms of uh, crude oil here. So UWT definitely on um, the radar for tomorrow. Let's take a look at Tesla today, guys, because Tesla, it's looking like it's continuing to confirm the support on the downwards uh, wedge that it is on, this downwards channel pattern that it is on here. So I want to see, are we going to break ultimately $280 to break above that 50 SMA resistance. From there, we could potentially see a runner up to the 290 level, maybe the mid 290 level back up towards the resistance portion of this little wedge slash channel that we are seeing here. So Tesla, definitely one that's worth watching. And let's say tomorrow the markets, they don't end up pushing up. And let's say the SPX does not end up pushing out of that 2870 resistance. Let's say tomorrow, since we had a green day today, a very strong green day at that, let's say the SPX ends up pulling back tomorrow, we can end up playing TVIX, which has been getting battered here over the past couple of uh, weeks. And TVIX is a market ETF that goes up whenever the markets are selling off. So if we see an aggressive red day here over the next couple of days, maybe even tomorrow after we had this big green day today, TVIX could end up seeing a nice run. <coughs> excuse me, to the upside. So those are a couple of ETFs and stocks that I'm watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sure a lot of you guys made some good money today, especially if you're invested in some long-term companies. A lot of the large caps did very, very well today. Let me know down below how you guys ended up doing today. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace out.